Through my career, um, I've been in many organisations as an HR and OD practitioner, particularly in the, in the dairy industry, uh, chemicals industry, and also in semi-retail. Um, but I'm presently working um, in the metals business, um, a small organisation in Rotherham, um, where we're trying to achieve um, a fairly major shift in organisational culture. Um, the business itself is fairly profitable, uh, produces various different types of metals, around 250 people. Um, but I think it's fair to say that the organisation's culture has been very traditional, um, very much a directive leadership style, um, very much a, a kind of typical South Yorkshire environment. Um, and I think as part of the organisation's uh, growth plan, it was important that we tried to create a, a new management culture which in, in engaged people um, got everybody's brains in the game, as it were, so that we could grow the organisation uh, from where we were at the moment through to being a more modern, forward-looking and hopefully greater profitability in terms of its uh, performance going forward. So it's important that we, we shifted the organisational culture to, to, in a sense, help to embrace and engage uh, everybody in the organisation in, uh, in the performance of the business. So to do that, we... Um, we basically implemented a five modular program of uh, training and development for managers and directors uh, across the business. Now that in involved around 50 people actually, so we had a good critical mass of people involved in that particular program. It was over five modules um, delivered by an external uh, organisation uh, over about an 18 month period. And my role was very much to support the people on the program uh, with coaching, one-to-one uh, -one su support, group facilitation, helping to embed what they'd learned between the modules uh, and help them to apply uh, some of the skills, uh, some of the concepts and the thinking um, to achieving their everyday jobs, really, um, so that it became a new way of working uh, on a fairly natural basis rather than something that just stayed on the, uh, on the training programme itself. Now, it's been interesting over the last sort of 18 months to be part of that programme and see the, um, the impact that the training's had. Um, I think the first thing we've learned is very much the importance of my role, actually, um, because I think without somebody on the inside helping people to assimilate the information, apply it to their everyday lives, I think a lot of the, the training would have been wasted. Um, I think typically people tend to retain 10 or 20% of what they um, learn on a training course. Um, but I found that uh, certainly with um, the work I was doing on a one-to-one -one and on a group basis, retention um, and certainly awareness of the key concepts on the programme, in my estimation, was getting up to 80 or 90 percent across the general population that had been through the programme. So the first thing we learned was that just to train in a classroom without ex extra support internally uh, is a waste of investment to a certain extent. And therefore investing in somebody on the inside who can help these people assimilate the information is a really uh, positive um, move for the organisation. The other thing we found was that we, we did um, identify quite a bit of resistance from a number of people uh, to some of the concepts and ideas that were being uh, trained on the programme. The programme was asking people to, to move away from traditional task management towards a more uh, facilitative coaching style of management which engaged uh, the people in the business. And whilst everybody seemed to identify that as a good thing to do, um, the theory was sound, but the actual practice was difficult for people to actually implement. Um, as always in change, there are a number of people um, who immediately went back and, and, and tried their best to embrace some of the concepts and techniques. Others found it more difficult, and certainly in the heat of the battle, uh, were much more happy to revert to type sometimes. And for some people in particular, uh, they never really um, you know, took on board some of the concepts and actually you know, were very uh, resistant really to some of the, the, uh, the, the major messages and concepts and techniques. That said, I think it's fair to say again because of the support we gave the organisation on the inside and the repetition of some of the material that we used throughout the, throughout the programme, uh, we did achieve um, quite a significant benefit through the sharing of stories. And that's the second thing that we learned, which was to just train of itself is not enough, to train and support may not be enough, but it's really important that an organisation starts to collect stories of some of the successes that have happened by individuals in applying some of the learned techniques. 
And these stories in themselves um, can therefore you know, kind of influence and really uh, create a positive momentum for the organisation as other people take on what they see as positive role modelling uh, of some of the ideas that were uh, presented in the programme. The other piece that was probably unexpected um, was that particularly towards the end of the programme, we sensed in some participants a growing um, dissatisfaction with higher management. As people started to understand the kind of management that they should be experiencing themselves, they themselves started to actually become very intolerant of poor behaviour as they saw it above them. And in some cases, certainly in, I can think of six cases now, people have actually left the organisation as a consequence of them not receiving what they felt were the proper type of management style that they'd been learning about on the programme. And because of that, I think now the chief executive of the organisation is becoming increasingly under pressure to start to remove some of the blockages um, that are perceived to still be there in some of the senior management behaviour, which may in fact mean that the organisation, to get true benefit, may have to actually start to remove some of the key people at the top if they don't continue to support the programme and actually start to meet the expectations of the people below. So you get this kind of upward pressure uh, from people in the organisation um, as they seek to, you know, in a sense, initiate some of the things that they've uh, learnt on the programme. And, 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 and it's also the pressure that they put on their own management to start to behave in a particular, particular way. I think my overall um, reflection on, on the programme is that training of itself is a good thing. Training with support is better. Training and the preponderance of stories does make a difference. And in fact, we have seen some significant benefits now, both at an individual level and at group level, from the training that we've, uh, we've invested in. But my main learning is that, as with all these kind of change initiatives, we need to, we need to take a systemic approach um, to considering how best to get the, the ultimate return on investment. And by that I mean training of itself is an intervention, a major one in an organisation. And I think we now need to think about our reward strategy, our resourcing strategy, um, our consequence management strategy really, to make sure that the changes that we're looking for in the culture um, really uh, you know, are achieved, not just from this training programme, but from a more holistic approach to the, um, the challenge of changing the organisation's um, performance.